Hi, and uh, thanks for watching again. Um, before we get started, please like and subscribe. Um, it really helps. But today, we're going to be looking at amps. And specifically, this guy. Um, you can hopefully see that it's a total mess of a circuit in there. It's not going to win a beauty contest for a beautiful circuit board or anything. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking in today's video. Um, so if you're not really interested in me yapping away about this amp, uh, you can skip to the tone samples towards the end. Um, I'll probably have the times somewhere in here. Um, but if you're not interested in that at all, you could just probably stop watching this right now. Um, but this amp started its life as this guy. Um, it was a Vox AC4C12, which is a 12-inch selection loaded a uh, four watt all tube amp that Vox released I don't know how many years ago um, but backtracking even further than that I had bought this amp first and this is the same amp but in a smaller enclosure uh, but it was a mini version made for the Japanese market and I was able to buy it for I think it was like 80 bucks not knowing um, what it was or having any idea about the circuitry at all um, and straight out of the box I didn't like the tone very much uh, so I started modding it, I started tracing the circuit, I looked online to see if anyone was modding it. And there are some people, but not a whole lot because it probably didn't sell very well. Did some mods to it and I liked the end result that I got with that. And hopefully we'll do a video on that eventually in the future. But then I found this amp, this guy, the 12 inch version, um, again for a really good deal. And so I just bought it on a whim. Um, because I knew the circuitry, I knew the PCB board, but I knew my way around it enough that um, I was pretty confident on modding it again. So I bought it on the basis of modding it. Shortly after that, um, I started seeing videos of the Marshall Class 5, um, and it sounded great. And I really wanted that Marshall raw, blues breaker, um, JTM kind of tone. And none of the amps that I had at the time had that tone. Um, I had pedals that mimicked it, but I'd wanted a tube amp that kind of had that tone. And so I started craving um, that Marshall tone in the Class 5. But the Class 5 was really expensive. And one day I was looking at the schem schematic of the Class 5. And then I realized that there's a lot of similarities between the Class 5 and the AC4. And because I was so familiar with this amp, the AC4, um, I thought, well, maybe I could try to rewire things, move things around, and sort of mimic or recreate the Class 5 circuit within this AC4 amp. Um, and so I started doing that, and it was actually relatively easy, uh, but it did become a mess as you see it here. Um, but I was able to achieve that Class 5 tone or something close to it. Um, obviously there are going to be differences in the speaker, in the cabin, and all that stuff, but here at home I can't play at volume so I'm always using headphones and playing through a cab sim anyway. But um, I modded this even further and added several switches to it so it's a sort of a Frankenstein app at this point. So we're just going to look at this amp today. Um, I'm not really going to go into the details of how to mod it because uh, I don't really recommend it. I'm just going to go through the different tones, hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's not going to be an informative video or a shootout like I've posted in the past, but um, I hope you enjoy the tones of this amp, and so let's get started. Okay, so we're back and taking a look at the schematic, and um, the first thing I want to mention is that these two amps share a very similar uh, topology, and that when I saw that, that's what made me think that I could probably mod my AC4 into class 5. And that is to have the EL84 single-ended class A output stage with two 12AX7s. So four total, I guess, in a way, um, because they're dual triodes, but uh, two 12AX7s. And so when I saw that it had the same topology, I figured, well, maybe um, this could be a possibility of modding it. And then the next thing that was really big is that both of them share um, what's called a cathode follower tone stack. And so Marshall amps um, in general actually have this and also Vox amps have it too. So that's why they both companies kept it in their smaller versions. But so this has a cathode follower going into a tone stack and then this has a cathode follower going into a tone stack. 
then obviously the pots are a little bit different, the resistor values are different, capacitor values are different, but to have that same um, layout, I figured, well, um, the only big difference is that the AC4 has one half of a 12A7 before that cathode follower, where the class 5 goes from the first gain stage straight into the cathode follower. Well, I figured, well, maybe why I can just swap these around um, and so put this behind the tone stack and have the first gain stage go into the 12A7. And so um, if I just rewire some stuff, cut some traces, and move some wires around, I would probably be able to um, get a similar layout as the class 5. And so that was um, the basis of me realizing that maybe this isn't going to be that difficult of a task. It actually was quite difficult, but not, not that crazy difficult. And so um, basically I just went ahead and traced, cut some traces and rewired all that stuff. Um, and so you get a class 5 mimicked AC4. And one thing you'll notice is that I haven't um, drawn out the power supplies. And that's because um, I didn't touch the power supply at all um, when modding the AC4. And so whatever power supply that was in the AC4, the rectifier and all that stuff is still the same. And so that's gonna be a big difference between um, my sort of modded class five and a real class five because it's gonna have a different power supply. I'm sure the Marshall has um, a more robust power supply being more expensive and all that. Um, so I just stuck with the basic circuitry of the amp itself. Okay, and so let's move on to the mods that I did um, further beyond the stock uh, class 5 schematic. Okay, so we're taking a look at um, the modded version of the class 5. You'll see that some of the resistor values have changed and capacitor values and the big thing that I should point out first is um, changing the cathode bypass capacitor on the first gain stage from what is a 10 microfarad in the stock class 5 to a 1 microfarad. Um, if you watch any of the uh, YouTube videos demoing the original class 5 in its stock form, you'll notice that a lot of the people have turned down the base knob quite a bit. Some people turn it down to like 9 o'clock and some people even turn it down all the way. And so when I first modded my AC4, I made a stock class 5 circuit out of it. Um, and once I started playing it, I noticed immediately that the bass was just way too overwhelming. There's just so much bass there. Um, and it was flabby and thuddy and just undefined. And so I changed that from a 10, 10 microfarad to a 1 microfarad. And that cut down on the bass quite a bit and made it really tight, um, well-defined and then also brought um, the clarity out of the midtones and the higher frequencies. And also I changed some of the resistor values and the uh, capacitor values in the tone stack. The one thing that you'll notice um, is this thing here. And I didn't necessarily do it this way because I wanted to. Um, the only reason why it is the way it is is because this is what was in the AC4. And so the cathode follower stage in the AC4 is wired just like a simple cathode follower with a 56K resistor. Um, it doesn't have this one meg, it doesn't, ha it doesn't split it between the two, um, none of that. It just has a single resistor going from the cathode to ground. Um, so I just left that alone and didn't bother trying to change it to exactly mimic the class five. And so this is um, just because of that. And also the 220 ohm resistor um, in the cathode of the L84 um, is only because that was there in the original class 4. And I figured, well, I could probably change it to 150 if I wanted to, but um, I didn't see it making a huge, huge difference. Um, the other thing that isn't drawn on the schematic is um, the class 5 doesn't have a master volume and um, the AC4 does. And so this part right here is now um, the master volume of my um, AC4. And I did change that. I think it was a 200K in the AC4. Um, I did change that to a 500K. Um, and so now this has a 500K master volume pot. Um, and I think that's it. So um, we can go on to the actual amp. So let's move on to the next part. Okay, so we're back and taking a look at the amp. Um, 
This is a little plank of wood that I have to keep the amp propped up. Without the cabinet, it's just going to fall over, so you can ignore that. You'll probably see the two 12A7s over here, um, the L84s right here. And so, um, and I'll quickly go through the knobs. So that's the gain knob, obviously, bass, middle, and treble. And I had to drill a hole and add that because the AC4 um, didn't have one. And this is the massive volume. Um, this is a bias knob that I added later on, and you can ignore that for now um, because it's maxed out, so it's essentially not in the circuit at this point. And then you'll see three little toggle switches. Um, each one has a little function to change the tone or the gain stage, but essentially when they're in the up position, so when all three are in the up position, it's the class 5 circuit. And so right now it's in the class 5 circuit. I have the master volume right around 3 o'clock. Um, and you can see the rest, but I like the master right around here uh, because you can max it out and you won't notice much of a difference but it just seems to add just a little bit of fizziness um, and if you remember back at the schematic of the class 5 they had a voltage divider right before the output tube and it was like 100k and a 470k I think and so this is kind of um, similar to that and also with the gain knob you can max it out and it sounds great but it does have a little bit of a harsh end to it um, so I kind of like it right around here and the treble bass and middle set the way it is um, so let's just start with this just play a simple E chord Okay, so you get the idea. It's a great sounding. Um, to my ears, it sounds a lot like what um, I expect a Class 5 to be. Um, it was kind of the tone that I was chasing when I first built this clone or this, this modded clone. Um, and it has that great fat martial sound. So let's crank the gain and maybe you'll, you'll get an idea of the harshness that I was talking about. <laughs> So it just seems to get too harsh um, and the notes are less defined. Um, it's almost the same amount of distortion but just you get the, the notes just bundle up and get all mushy and you don't get much note definition or clarity. And so again back to like the 2.30 or 2 o'clock ish setting which is my favorite. Okay, um, and I guess we should quickly go through the gain knob just to see what kind of um, gain range we can get. Okay, um, so back to that, and then I guess we should probably go through the um, the tone stack real quick. And so I'll go on to the neck pickup, so we get a little bit more bass, and we'll start with everything at noon. And um, let me clean this up a little bit.
So you definitely do notice a difference in the bays. Um, it gets really thuddy and flabby uh, at maximum. And let's move on to the middle. And again, um, there definitely is a difference, but it's not huge. And then um, lastly, the treble knob. Now the next thing I want to try is to um, see how clean you can get this amp. When we turned down the gain earlier it got really clean but um, I've noticed from my experience that, okay we'll do something like this, turning down the master volume just a little bit to like 1 o'clock, turning down the gain to like 10 o'clock gives a really nice clean tone and so we'll stay on the neck pickup and you kind of get something like this. Okay, so that's like a really nice clean tone uh, because of the Marshall Tone Stack circuit. It has a lot of mids um, and it's a really nice, fat, clean sound. You can go online and, and find other videos going through the whole Class 5 uh, different settings and all that stuff, but um, that's kind of a simple rundown of what this amp sounds like. Okay, so um, now I want to go through another extra mod setting that I built into this amp. So after I built the Class 5 clone, um, I was playing around with it. I wanted to do something further to, to make it more versatile and just have a little bit of fun with it. And so what I did was I added these three um, toggle switches. And so each one has a little bit of a different functionality to it. But basically what it does is when you turn it all, the, all three of them down, and you turn down well we don't have to turn down the gain but um, if you change the tone stack to something like this what you get and I'm gonna be on the neck pickup um, what you get is a Fender-ish amp Okay, so it's obviously not going to be um, exactly like a Fender amp because there's so many things that are different about this. Um, the resistor values, the, the pot values for the tone stack, um, the gain structure, um, the cathode follower right before the tone stack, and all that stuff is going to be different. So, But what I did was with um, these two switches, I changed the tone stack and some of the resistor values in um, different parts of the circuit to create more of a mid-scooped uh, frequency response because the Marshall is a very mid pushed frequency response and so to create that Fender sound you want to create a mid scoop and so that's what I did with these two switches this switch um, actually bypasses uh, the third preamp section um, one half of a 12 8 7 and so you get lower gain um, so basically um, I'm just gonna jump back real quick to this and so basically with that last switch, what you're doing is you're taking the output from the tone stack and sort of jumping over this one half of a 12AX7 and going over here. And there's some stuff in between um, 
just grid resistors and capacitors and all that stuff. But in essence, you're just jumping one extra gain stage to clean up the signal a little bit. And so let's go um, and clean this up and you'll see what I mean. Okay, and um, on to the bridge pickup. Okay, so you kind of get an idea of what I was talking about. It, it, it's not really a Fender amp tone, but it, it comes close to it. And um, let's. Uh, let's see. Let's go through the gain real quick. Basically get a whole range of gain from really sparkly clean all the way to a nice um, hard classic rock sound. And uh, let's raise the master a little bit. And so this is kind of my favorite as far as a gain sound goes. <laughs> Okay, so you get that fendery nice breakup, and because you're eliminating one um, gain stage, it's it's I don't know how to say it best, but um, it's like a clean uh, breakup, meaning that um, you you're, you're not doing cascading gain that much, and so it's like a nice straightforward breakup tone. Um, okay, so uh, I guess just very quickly um, because there really isn't a point in comparing the two different um, settings or stages but um, I will just do a real quick comparison of what the different tones are um, with the switches up and down and so let's go into the bridge pickup and we'll gain up this we'll keep that around there um, and so I'm not going to touch the gain knob or the mass volume um, I'm just going to change the switches and then change the tone stack So you definitely notice a lot of um, mids, a lot of uh, bass, like a really fat tone, and obviously that extra gain stage to give it that saturation. And so the bridge pickup on this Telecaster almost sounds like a humbucker or a P90 with this class 5-ish amp.
so that's about it for today. Um, I apologize that it was a long video with lots of talking, uh, but I hope some of you found the information um, useful or uh, interesting. And as usual, please share your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And again, thanks for watching.